Hello there. This is Jim Leeming, your Ballantine sportscaster. Once again, pro football reached new heights with record crowds. And of course, the top team of the year was the Philadelphia Eagles. Smashing through to the Eastern Division Championship, they went on to meet Green Bay in the Pro Football Classic. Under coach Buck Shaw, fellas like Bednarik, Dean, and Van Brocklin had their greatest seasons. But that's what you're here to see. Ballantyne is particularly proud to present this film, which relives the Eagles in 1960 because Ballantyne sponsors the Eagles on TV and has since 1957. This is all part of Ballantyne's famous three-ring sports program to give fans radio, TV, and film coverage of their favorite sports. But right now, let's get to the film and go through 1960 with the Philadelphia Eagles. Franklin Field, Philadelphia is the scene as Buck Shaw's Philadelphia Eagles clash with the Detroit Lions of George Wilson. 38,000 fans are on hand to see if the Eagles can stay in contention with the Browns and Giants at the expense of the victory-starved Lions. It's the Eagles striking first in the opening period as Norm Van Brocklin hits Pete Retzlaff with a quick pass. Norm's precise pitch is an early indication of what's to follow. Behind good protection, Van Brocklin fakes to his left but sets his sights on Tommy McDonald, who arrives just in the nick of time to pull in the pass and make it all the way to the one. Powerful Clarence Peaks heads for the top of the pile and gets over for the Eagles' first score. The Philadelphia team has a 7-0 lead going into the second quarter. Van Brocklin picks out his receivers quickly and rifles a shot to Ted Dean. The rookie back takes the bullet pass and blasts into the lion's den for the second Eagle touchdown. The Big Birds are off and winging, 14-0, with seven minutes left in the first half. The Eagles try to get airborne on the arm of Norm Van Brocklin in the third quarter, but Joe Schmidt intercepts the deflected pass for the Lions. The big linebacker races 17 yards to the end zone for his first pro touchdown in eight seasons of play. The Lions are right back in the game at 14-10. Earl Morrill tries to get the Lions going as he passes in the fourth quarter, but Don Burrows turns the tables with an interception for the Eagles. Burrows returns the ball to the Lion 38. Van Brocklin, well protected in the Eagles' nest of blockers, has time to measure his throw on a six-point pitch to Bobby Walston. The Birds bolt back to take a commanding 21-10 lead early in the final period. The Lions unable to threaten the Eagles strike again. A good block opens a hole for Clarence Peaks and he takes the ball for a 49-yard ride to Pater. The Birds punch up seven more points to breathe easier with a 28-10 lead. The Lions go for quick yardage as they try to retaliate. Jim Nanowski misses his receiver, but Chuck Pednarik is delighted to take charge of the ball. The veteran Eagle linebacker stamps out the Lion threat. The Eagles' big 28-10 win over the Lions keeps them close to the Browns and the Giants as all three drive for top honors in the East. Almost 65,000 Cleveland Brown fans are massed in windswept Municipal Stadium to watch their undefeated heroes tangle with the Philadelphia Eagles, whose only loss was a 41-24 shellacking at the hands of these same Browns. The Big Birds are out to prove that today will be different. Norm Van Brocklin emphasizes just how different as he passes on the Eagles' first play from scrimmage. Bobby Walston makes the catch in full stride, keeps his balance, and scores on a 49-yard play. Eagles 7, Cleveland nothing. In the second period, it's third and seven as Milt Plum fades and fires for six. Gern Negler is all alone, but he drops the ball. It's a bad break for the Browns. Sam Baker salvages three points with a 23-yard field goal, and Cleveland trails by just one point, 7-6. It looks as if this might be a drum-tight defensive struggle until the Browns break things wide open. Blum retreats to his three and hoists the ball to Leon Clark. Clark has Jim Carr beaten and keeps him that way as he leads the parade to the goal line. The 86-yard play boosts the Browns into a 12-7 lead.
After holding the Eagles twice, Cleveland is driving late in the half. Milt Plum is under tremendous pressure from the Eagle Blitz, but he manages to find Bobby Mitchell for an 18-yard gain. Tom Brookshire dumps Bobby out of bounds. With five seconds remaining in the first half, Sam Baker boots a 44-yard placement over the bar, and Cleveland fans smell victory as the Browns lead 15-7 after 30 minutes of play. First time they get the ball in the third quarter, the Browns rock the Eagles by giving it to Jim Brown. A little room is all the great fullback needs as he shakes off every attempt to stop him on a 71-yard touchdown run that widens the Cleveland lead to 22-7. But nothing discourages the Big Birds today. They work the draw play to near perfection as Clarence Peaks bursts into the open and weaves his way downfield behind a nice block by Tommy McDonald on a 57-yard run that makes it goal to go. Billy Barnes burrows into the pile to pick up the final yard. The Eagles are on the way back as they narrow the gap to 22-14. After stopping the Browns on four downs, the Eagles engineer another lightning strike. Van Brocklin's pass travels 59 yards in the air, and Tommy McDonald is under it to land in the end zone for the TD. The score is a tense 22-21. On the final play of the third period, the Eagles go for the lead. Pete Retzlaff feels Van Brocklin's pass and gets to the Cleveland eight. Van Brocklin executes a nice fake, then flips to Billy Barnes, and the big halfback has it for the score. The Birds complete their comeback by taking a 28-22 lead. Now the Browns hit the comeback trail. Milt Plum rolls out and throws to Bobby Mitchell. Bobby dodges down the sideline for a 33-yard gain. The Eagles have contained him on outside runs, but he's been murder on short passes. With the Eagles stacked up to stop Brown at the middle, Plum steps back and passes to Mitchell, and Cleveland regains the lead in this thrilling struggle. It's 29-28. The Eagles are fighting both the Browns and the clock now. Van Brocklin gets them off and flying from their 10 with a pass to Pete Retzlaff, good for 27 yards. With just seconds left, Van Brocklin hurries back and hurls over the middle. It's intercepted by Bobby Franklin, but the officials have detected interference with the Eagle receiver, and the birds are still alive. In a heart-stopping finish, Bobby Walston boots a 38-yard field goal that barely clears the bar with 16 seconds left in the game, and the Eagles win. It's a big victory for the birds in one of the greatest battles in the National Football League since the 1958 championship game. The Eagles triumph 31-29 to stay in the thick of the Eastern Conference championship race. The Philadelphia Eagles tied for the lead at the summit of the Eastern Conference attract the largest home crowd since 1950 as 58,324 packed Franklin Field for their key battle with the Pittsburgh Steelers. The green-shirted birds take charge as Van Brocklin hands to Clarence Peaks on the draw play. Clarence cuts for the near sideline, gets by Scooter Scudero, and lopes 35 yards before Dean Derby can catch him. Van Brocklin hands to another flashy eagle back. He's Billy Barnes, and he's touchdown bound as he takes the long way around on a nine-yard sweep that stuns the Steelers. Eagle seven, Pittsburgh nothing. After stalling the Steelers twice, the Eagles are on the go with Van Brocklin faking the Peaks, then hitting him with a screen pass. Peaks pounds the Pittsburghers on a 12-yard game. We move in close as Van Brocklin goes for six. Tommy McDonald has outdistanced Dean Derby, and it's another Eagle touchdown as the Birds take a 14-0 lead in the second quarter. Bobby Walston adds a field goal to make it 17 for Philadelphia.
Third period action finds the Eagles airborne again. Van Brocklin arches the ball over the middle. McDonald has a little more company this time, but he makes the catch and tumbles across to score. It's 24-0 Eagles. Eagle pressure forces Lane to hurry his throw on this play. Chuck Bednarik makes a clutch interception as the Philadelphia defense kills the Steeler threat. Sparked by Bednarik's interception, the Eagles drive in the fourth quarter with Van Brocklin tossing to Clarence Peaks. Clarence almost loses the ball but manages to hang on and sprints to a 19-yard gain. On fourth down, it's all up to Bobby Walston. Walston swings his leg, and the Eagles have three more points. Philadelphia now leads 27-0. But Pittsburgh spoils the Eagles' dream of a shutout on this play. Tom Tracy takes the ball and hurls it 52 yards through the air. Buddy Dial steps across to put Pittsburgh on the board, and it's 27-7. Van Brocklin likes his yardage in big chunks, and Tommy McDonald is just the man to help him. The two team up for their third touchdown as the Eagles roll to a handsome 34-7 win to take first place in the Eastern Conference. The Philadelphia Eagles, currently leading the Eastern Conference, move into Yankee Stadium for one of the biggest battles of the season with the second place New York Giants. A win for the New Yorkers would put them on top in this close race, which is one of the most exciting in National Football League history. George Shaw begins the fireworks with a high arching bomb to Kyle Road and 63,000 fans see the Giants threaten early. Joe Morrison plunges over for the first score of the game and the Giants jump onto the scoreboard with seven points. Shaw sends the ball flying in the second quarter with a completion of Frank Gifford. Frank is swarmed under by three Eagle defenders. When the Giants are finally forced to punt, Don Chandler decides to run with the ball and the surprise is good for 23 yards, as well as a giant first down. The Eagles sharpen their claws and force the Giants to go for a field goal. The kick is good and the home team jumps out in front, 10-0. Shaw shoots a flat pass to Gifford, who has it on the Eagle nine yard line and it's goal to go Giants. On fourth down, Gifford tries again, but the Eagles throw him back on a great goal line stand, and the first half ends with the Giants taking a 10-0 lead into the locker room. In the third quarter, the Eagles' Billy Barnes finds a hole off tackle and blasts through to start the Eagles winging. The pass master, Norm Van Brocklin, looks for Tommy McDonald downfield, Fires a long completion and Tom tumbles into the end zone for an Eagle touchdown. The conference leaders now trail by only three points, 10-7. Flying Dutchman is now finding protection and open receivers as he hits Tommy McDonald with a pass near the sideline. Van Brocklin again throws a pass to McDonald who pulls in the aerial with a diving catch. The Eagles continue to put pressure on the Giants' secondary. Bobby Walston gets a chance to cash in three points as he kicks the all-important field goal that ties up the game at 10-10. Shaw drops back to pass. Late in the final period, he hits Joe Morrison with a swing pass, and the Giants are one yard short of an important first down. It's Mel Triplett trying for the first down, but he juggles the ball at the line of scrimmage, and Jim Carr retrieves it in midair. Carr digs for pay dirt and scores for the Eagles as they close the door on the Giants, 17 to 10. The Giants now drop a game and a half behind the Eagles in the Eastern Conference standing. The New York Giants invade Philadelphia for a second shot at the high-flying Eagles. Franklin Field is packed to the rafters as the Birds go after their eighth victory. Giants stun everyone in the park on the first scrimmage play of the game. George Shaw drops back to pass. Kyle Rhodes behind Bob Freeman and the great giant end pulls it in and races away to complete a 71-yard scoring play. After 45 seconds of play, the Giants lead 7-0. The New Yorkers, anxious to avenge last week's loss to the Eagles, send Ed Sutton around right end on their second play from scrimmage. Sutton heads for the sideline and streaks for 34 yards to midfield. 
George Shaw then fires a steamer into the end zone. Kyle Rode makes the catch, and the Giants hike their total to 14. Matt Summerall adds a field goal near the end of the period to give the Giants a 17 to nothing lead after one quarter. In the second stands, as Shaw sends a long pass downfield, but Bobby Freeman steals it and hustles down the sideline for 48 yards to the Giant nine. Rock rib giant defenders dig in, but Bobby Walston breaks the ice with a 15-yard field goal worth three eagle points. Now it's 17-3, Giants. Shaw tries to regain his composure, but Maxi Vaughn hijacks the cargo. The rookie linebacker from Georgia Tech returns to the Giant 26. Eagle Chief Norm Van Brocklin picks at the Giant defense as he hits Ted Dean over the middle. The young Eagle scampers in for the touchdown to give the Birds a new lease on life, 17 to 10. A third interception keeps the Eagle ambush rolling. Ted Dean runs the draw play for 17 yards to the Giant 16. Billy Barnes follows the blocking of Jerry Youth and Bednarik as he drives for the goal. Barnes fumbles, but Eagle tackle J.D. Smith hops on the loose pigskin for the touchdown. In less than six minutes, the Eagles have risen from the doldrums of defeat to not the count at 17 off. The Giants, bent on regaining their first quarter superiority, retaliate as George Shaw hits Kyle Root for a 35-yard gain. With the second period racing to an end, the Giants go for the field goal. Pat Summerall's boot from 31 yards out gives the Giants a 20 to 17 edge after one of the most exciting first halves of the season. The Giants regain full strength in the third period. Mel Triplett blasts up the middle on a rock'em sock'em jaunt to the Eagle 11. Tom Brookshire makes the stop. The Giants lose momentum and on fourth down, Pat Summerall sends his third three-pointer of the day across the bar from 15 yards out. Giants 23, Eagle 17. George Shaw has the New Yorkers moving late in the quarter, but Don Burroughs leaps high in the air for his second interception, and the hometown heroes take over on the Giant 49. On the first play of the fourth quarter, Norm Van Brocklin hurls a toss down the middle. Ted Dean makes the catch, and the rapid rookie rockets for the goal line to complete a 51-yard scoring play that puts the Eagles on top for the first time in the game, 24-23. Puzzle Giants try to recover. Joe Morrison takes a handoff, and the trouble begins. Joe loses possession after a jolt from Maxi Vaughn. Jim Carr dives on the ball for the Eagles. The daring Dutchman fakes beautifully to Dean, then lobs a pass to Billy Barnes. Barnes scores to give the Eagles a 31-23 victory over the Giants, featured by a brilliant comeback from a 17-point deficit. The Eagles need only one victory in the remaining three games to clinch their first Eastern Conference crown in 11 years. The Philadelphia Eagles, winners of eight consecutive games, fly into St. Louis hungry to clinch the Eastern Conference championship, and a win over the up-and-coming cards will do it. A powder keg explodes when John Roach has an aerial bomb swiped by Don Burrows of the Eagles. While the Cardinals are deciding whether the ball is dead, the Eagle defensive halfback proves he's very much alive by returning 46 yards to the card 17. Don led the Birds in interceptions in 1960, and this was his longest one of the year. The cards refuse to crumble, so Bobby Walston kicks his 12th field goal of the season to put the Eagles out in front, three to nothing. It's Eagles ball late in the second period. Norm Van Brocklin pivots quickly and rifles to Ted Dean. Dean takes the quick pass for 37 yards before Jim Hill can make the tackle. Van Brocklin has the Eagles moving as he shoots a pass to Pete Retzlaff, who has infiltrated the Cardinal secondary. Pete scores, and now the Eagles lead the Redbirds 10 to nothing. In the third period, Van Brocklin picks up where he left off, and the Eagles' master hits Pete Retzlaff in the flat. Retzlaff roars down the sideline until he's finally caught on the Cardinal 32-yard line. This Eagle threat is checked by the cards, but Bobby Walston kicks a 39-yard field goal to feather the Eagles' nest with a 13-0 lead. 
John Roach hands off to John Crow late in the third quarter. And the Cardinal star shoots by the Big Birds until he loses the ball deep in Eagle territory. Mike McGee recovers for the Cardinals to keep the Red Bird threat alive. Mal Hammock dents the Eagle defense for a touchdown and the Cards only trail by seven points. Philadelphia's Van Brocklin pumps a swing pass to Theron Sapp in the final quarter. Sapp carries the ball for a 14-yard flight into Cardinal land. Norm Van Brocklin has the arm while Tommy McDonald has the angle and together they give the Philadelphia Eagles their second touchdown of the day. The scoring ends with a 20 to 6 victory over the Cardinals and the Eagles fly home with their first Eastern Conference title since 1949. Franklin Field in Philadelphia is the arena for this world championship battle between the Eastern Conference champions, the Philadelphia Eagles, and the Green Bay Packers, rulers of the Western Conference. The fabulous Dutchman, Norm Van Brocklin, earned the league's most valuable player award for his role in the Eagles' flight to victory. Packers move in the first period after recovering an Eagle fumble. Paul Harding drives over the left side for five yards. Our ground camera watches Jim Taylor take a handoff from Bart Starr. Jim bangs to the Eagle 11. A penalty stymies the Packers and Paul Horning tries a field goal. Paul's boot soars through the blue. Referee Ron Gibbs signals the kick is good and the Packers from Green Bay have drawn first blood as they take an early 3 to nothing lead. The Packers work the trap play to perfection. Jim Taylor finds the hole and runs rough shot for a 13-yard pickup. The first quarter ends with Green Bay leading three to nothing. Bart Starr opens the second period by pitching a perfect strike to Boyd Daller. It's another first down on the Eagle 15. Three straight incomplete passes force the Packers to try for three points. Horning connects from the 23 yard line. The Packers post a six nothing lead early in the second period. The Eagles finally get moving. Van Brocklin drops back, and it's Tommy McDonald slanting across the middle. The Eagles speed merchant gets to the Packer 35 before he's stopped by Hank Greminger. Again, Van Brocklin goes back and looks for McDonald. Tommy's open on the seven to take Van's pass into the end zone for the first touchdown of the game. Bobby Walston adds the point, and it's 7-6 Eagles. Packers fail to move, and Van Brocklin continues his long-range bombing. Pete Retzlaff makes a beautiful catch. The play nets 41 yards to the Packer 33. Packers are wary of the long pass, so Van shoots a swing pass to Ted Dean. Ted makes a perfect cutback and fights to the 8-yard line. Packer defense stiffens and Bobby Walston tries a field goal from the 15. The kick is good. It's Eagles 10, Green Bay 6 at halftime. Eagle fans hope their birds can hold the lead for two more periods to become world champions. In the third quarter, Van Brocklin wastes little time in dropping back and looking for McDonald. Van finds Tommy slanting through the Packers secondary. Jesse Whittenden makes the tackle, but the Birds have a first down on the Green Bay 40. The Eagles move closer, and our slow motion camera sees Van Brocklin roll out to his right. The Dutchman aims for McDonald, but John Simank goes high to pull down the pass. A great play by Simank, and it's first and 10 Green Bay on the 20. The Eagle defense holds the Packers and Max McGee is back to punt. Max fakes and then takes off on a dangerous mission through the Eagles. McGee gets 35 yards before he's nailed by Ted Dean on the Eagle 45.
Starr keeps the Packers moving as he connects with Gary Canapel on the Eagle 32. The third quarter ends with the Eagles ahead 10 to 6. As the fourth period opens, let's watch in slow motion as Tom Moore follows number 64, Jerry Kramer, around left end. Maxie Bond rolls off Kramer's block and hits into Moore. Tom gets eight yards on the play, and it's first and goal from the 10. On second down, Bart Starr fires to Max McGee, slanting into the end zone for a Green Bay touchdown. Horning adds the conversion, and the Packers take the lead, 13 to 10. Paul Horning kicks off for Green Bay. Ted Dean takes it on the two. The Eagles clear a path for Ted up the left side. Tim Brown, number 22, leads the way for Dean. Willie Wood makes the stop on the Packer 39, a beautiful 59-yard return for Mr. Dean. Van Brocklin flips a quick pass to Billy Barnes. Billy scrambles for 13 yards to the Packer 14. Ted Dean is red hot and Van sends him wide. Dean blazes by the stunned Packers. Jerry Hugh throws the key block and Dean goes in for the score. Ralston converts to make it 17 to 13 Eagles. The Eagles hold the Packers the rest of the way to win their first world championship since 1949 with a brilliant come from behind victory. 